Thanks so much for being with us here on another edition of Austin Fit Talks. With school starting, it seems appropriate that we'd be joined by Cami Hawkins, the CEO of Marathon Kids. Cami, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. I know we're watching school districts navigate the challenges of, do we bring kids back in person? Do we go virtual? I would imagine a lot of that trickles down to your programming for Marathon Kids. How are y'all dealing with the start of the school year and getting things going here? Yeah, it absolutely does. And the probably one of the most difficult things is that every single school district is different. So we're a national organization. So we're trying to fit the needs of every district across the country that want to use Marathon Kids. But we were really fortunate in the spring, um, if you can say fortunate in relation to the pandemic, um, because we were in the midst of building a mobile application for digital lap tracking. And so because of the timing, we were able to add a few features that will allow parents to continue the program at home. And so now we feel like we've got our bases covered. So regardless of if the kids are on campus or at home or in some sort of hybrid environment, they can still participate in Marathon Kids and keep that activity going. Man, that's fortuitous timing, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Again, you know, everybody, I think the word of the year is pivot and everybody sure. on our team was able to pivot and again, add in these new features. And this is a huge change for Marathon Kids because the delivery of the program now is an open access um, free programming for any school or community organization that wants to participate. And so not only were we able to open the access to it, but because of the changes we were able to make to the feature set, we can allow parents um, to get in there and, and stay with it with their kids through the year. Well, that's incredible. I, I want to talk about everything you're doing right now, but for people that may be have a little bit of a familiarity with Marathon Kids, but don't know exactly what Marathon Kids is. Can you give us just a little bit of the background of, of what y'all do and what Marathon Kids is? Sure. So we um, actually are going to be celebrating our 25th season this year. So we were started in Austin, Texas. Um, in the beginning, Kay Morris was our founder, and she worked with people like Paul Carroza and Will Wynn here in Austin to put Marathon Kids in schools. And really the idea was to help kids see that by setting goals, that they could achieve those goals through small steps. And the goal was to achieve the equivalent of a marathon. So our program is built on giving kids that first early positive experience with physical activity and then showing them how that goal setting can really um, you know, support them through achieving those goals. And so now as we've evolved over the years, um, a few years back, probably about six years ago, the, the team started really thinking more towards um, childhood obesity and type two diabetes and really addressing the inactivity crisis that we face in this nation. And so we increased the volume of the activity that we asked the kids to try to achieve. And so now they, they run the equivalent of four marathons throughout their school season. Again, wow. one step at a time, one lap at a time, not 26.2 miles at a time, <laughs> but like a quarter mile, half mile, a mile at a time. You, you mentioned, you know, starting in Austin, small steps, so to speak. And then you told me just before we started, how many people did you touch last year nationally? Nationally, last year, we had just over 136,000 kids participate in the program. That's pretty incredible, right? To think that something that began here in Austin has, has gotten that nationwide and is reaching that many kids. It is. It's amazing. And again, credit to the, to the teams of people that have been with Marathon Kids through the years. You know, it's so great for me to be now part of the organization. I've been with them three years, just celebrated my three year anniversary, but my kids were Marathon Kids. So I've mm. known about Marathon Kids, you know, since the early 2000s. And it's just fantastic to see what the program has done, how it's evolved to really meet the changes that kids have experienced and to be able to offer something that's still engaging and fun for them to be involved in. Do you remember when your kids were doing it? Was it something that, you know, they were excited about and to be participating in? I absolutely remember it. Um, huh. Back in the day, I was, I was more of a runner than I am now. So it was definitely something that I was interested in. And we would love, you know, the celebration, the kickoff celebration to get the kids going and then tracking their miles on their little sheets, coloring in their circles, and then finishing up with the big finisher event and getting their t-shirt or their medal 
Um, so yeah, I definitely remember. I wish I had some, I can't find any pictures. I wish I had some. Oh old yeah. That'd be cool to see for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, you mentioned this is your 25th anniversary. I'm sure this isn't necessarily the way you envisioned the 25th anniversary going, but given the way things are, how much maybe in some ways more important is marathon kids right now as we head into this school year? Yeah, um, it's such a great point. It is more important than ever. I mean, we are already seeing the effects of COVID. Um, like I said earlier, we were, already, we were already in a nationwide inactivity crisis. And now because of shelter in place and staying at home and the kids having to be on screen time more than ever, um, we're seeing a real dip in physical activity. And, you know, at first we were a little bit encouraged because you saw when everybody was staying at home, everybody was out walking. You saw people sure. walking in their yards. Now, of course, in the Texas heat, we've kind of seen that slow down a little bit. But, you know, I think there was a real recognition of how important physical activity is to our overall mental health and well being. And so, you know, our fear is that. The most vulnerable populations, the kids that we're really trying to reach and give this experience to, are going to suffer the worst because they're not going to have access to programming um, and or PE teachers and coaches. Their parents are working, you know, sometimes two jobs or it's a single parent household. So we're, we're really concerned and we do believe that, you know, at this day and age, it is such a important critical piece of physical and mental health. I'm sure this is this is kind of the million dollar question, but how do you touch those kids that, you know, maybe don't have parents around that can help them on a daily basis or, or are more vulnerable as you say? Yeah, so we, we've done a lot of things to try to, try to kind of uh, bridge the gaps that we know exist. So one of the things we did this summer, we launched our walk and talk program and our run and read program early, but that usually means that somebody has to find us through the internet, download their mileage logs, and get running. Um, this summer, we partnered with the Austin Area Council of PTAs. They were working with the free lunch distribution centers, so we printed out a bunch of mileage logs, um, you know, in English and Spanish, to try to pass that information on and get those, get those families moving. We're also talking with lots of groups in town, Austin Runners Club, the Trail Foundation, to see if there's a way as we start to, you know, um, open up the, the world and allow people to come out and participate in physical activity in a safely, socially distanced way, we want all of our partners to be able to, you know, run a run club or do a mm. PE class that they can do safely and the kids can participate. You know, we're not there yet, but our hope is that soon we'll be able to get to those kids in real, real life and not just through a screen. How much of this do you think is just about exposure? Like just exposing a kid to, hey, it can be fun to go walk around the trail downtown, wherever you may live. Um, you know, how, how big is that piece? Just to get them to take that quite literally, that first step. It's, I mean, you're exactly right. That's the whole thing, right? And a lot of times, you know, when we talk to, to our communities in need, it's exactly that. They've never been exposed. I mean, even the word marathon to them doesn't really, you know, they don't understand that word at five, six, seven years old. And so when you explain it and you, you know, get them out there, there's nothing more fun than watching a kid run a, a foot race or run around a track or finish a mile and just the elation that they feel and the pride that they get from accomplishing that. I mean, those are the best stories that we see, you know, these kids that have never, you know, experienced real vigorous physical activity and then they do and, and they just get so excited about it. It's amazing, but you're right. It's exposure and, and it's hard because, you know, we, we live in a world where, you know, there's so much information coming at people all the time that sometimes physical activity just, unless you're already into physical activity, it's not something that you necessarily think about. Our culture has gotten to the point where, you know, we are more sedentary. Um, and so it's, it's about reaching those parents through teachers and PE coaches and the community. Um, I think Austin's such a great place. We have such a culture of fitness here, you know, so I think that that helps us. Um, but yeah, it's huge. The exposure piece is the biggest first step. 
You, I mean, you, you talk about that. I remember a couple of years ago talking to Jack Murray here in Austin, who runs the Austin Marathon. And I remember when they redesigned the course, one of the things he said was, we want to take this course into East Austin, an area that maybe, to your point, isn't exposed to fitness as much and doesn't even think about the Austin Marathon, you know, and, and they did. And I just, you know, I wonder if that's something, I hope that that's something people are doing nationwide so people can just see, yeah. you know, kids out there or adults out there running and see that it can be fun, maybe. And yes. Totally, totally agree with you. Yes, love when the you know when Austin Marathon did that. I mean, we have such a treasure here in Austin with the trail. I mean, that ten mile loop crosses every boundary, you know, east and west. Um, I mean, it and it's beautiful and it's accessible and it's accessible to pretty much every community in our city. And so, yeah, you really want to you know spread the word and hopefully reach these folks and just again show them that that it exists and how awesome it is what is what does the data show you about kids who participate in marathon kids and then what they go on to or how it leads to maybe a more healthy lifestyle for them yeah it's i mean all the research is incredible so marathon kids has always been an evidence based program so we've always been very interested in the science of it you know are we really impacting kids increasing those moderate to vigorous physical activity minutes that they need so we have empirically you know um, shown that we do do that and that kids that participate in marathon kids are more physically active than kids that don't. I mean, it sounds pretty straightforward, but you know, honestly, you have to prove it out. Sure. Um, and you know, the other thing is that kids today are supposed to be getting 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity every single day. And unfortunately, even pre-pandemic, only one in five kids was actually reaching that minimum amount. And so, you know, not only is it just the, the activity minutes, but also our research shows us that by being physically active, especially throughout the day, little spurts, 10, 15 minutes at a time, what it does for kids is it turns their brains on. I mean, we literally have pictures of, um, you know, of, of um, what's it called, the CAT scans that show you, mm. you know, um, what it looks like when a child is sedentary for, for 20 minutes and then they do physical activity and then what their brain looks like after that. And it literally lights up the hippocampus, which puts them in a position to be ready to learn. And so, you know, we are always trying to work with our schools and our school districts to influence them to increase the amount of physical activity and physical activity opportunities that kids get during the school day. Because not only does it help them with learning, so they achieve, academically achieve more, it also helps with their social emotional well being. It helps them be able to kind of control themselves so their behavior is better. We see that their attendance is better. And so, mm. you know, all of our public schools, I mean, a lot of the funding is dependent upon attendance and kids that are physically active and healthy are in school more. And so it just, the benefits of it are, are, are all around. I mean, it's every aspect of a kid's life is improved if they're physically active. And yes, to your point, there is definitely data that says that if you're physically active as a child, you are much more likely to be continue to be physically active into adulthood. So we see a real dip in physical activity once kids go to middle school, um, especially in girls. And so that's an area now that we have the new application, we would love to broaden our horizons and really impact that middle school to high school aged kid in a way that's relevant to them. So um, yeah, I mean, being physically active early is better because you do adopt those behaviors. And even if you get away for it, from it for a while, you typically will come back to it as an adult. That's interesting because when I think about marathon kids, and maybe this is just me not knowing better, but I tend to think those younger kids, the elementary school kids, is the program available to kids that are older, middle school, high school? It, it is available. Um, you know, it, we probably, um, we have a few middle schools across the country that do marathon kids and then even fewer high schools that use it as just kind of a guide for training and are just tracking for what they might be doing, whether it's PE or even cross country. But again, you know, it's marathon kids and it was sure. really kind of geared towards that elementary age child. But it now through the Marathon Kids Connect app, I think we'll have an opportunity to expand that platform and really make the content, even though it's the same content 
at its at the base level that make it relevant to an older kid where they are engaging at an appropriate mileage goal at you know that it's using the language that that is engaging to them so really kind of broaden our horizons to reach those populations in the future you were telling me that you have a relay coming up and i noticed one of the things you mentioned there is that alums might participate in and so i'm wondering like you know 25 years in now you obviously have a generation that's grown up and probably has their own kids do you see those alumni that you know participate in marathon kids you know, maybe number one, talking about how it was great for them, and then number two, starting to get their kids involved? Yes. Um, so actually, it's, I love that you asked this question, because just yesterday, um, our programs team was doing a training with the AISD PE teachers, and um, we had uh, one of our staff members had asked everyone to stand up on the Zoom call, and then as, the, as we rattled off the number of years that they had participated in Marathon Kids, they would sit down so that, mm -hmm. you know, by the end, 25 years, we still had a couple of people still standing that have been doing the program since the inception. Wow. Then we had one teacher who raised her hand and said, well, does it count if I was a Marathon Kid and now I'm a coach and a teacher and now coaching Marathon Kids? So you're exactly right. Um, we think we've reached about 2.5 million kids Jeez, through the incredible. entire 25 years and so um, we are really inviting our alumni to come back and join us for this kickoff and this 25th anniversary celebration you mentioned the relay we're calling it we run the world and we're trying to run 25,000 miles which is just over the circumference of the earth and it's free to join obviously you can give a donation if you would like to but what we'd really like to do is we'd like all of those alumni you know, parents, friends, community members, anyone who's interested in physical activity and passing that on to kids this year to join We Run the World and to add their miles to the 25,000 mile challenge. So it's gonna be fun. It's that's a great idea. 25,000 miles is a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's ambitious. That's why we're just, we're asking everyone, please come register. They just go to our website um, and then for, you know, forward slash we run the world and we've partnered with a company called fit rankings that um, will aggregate all of the different um, tracking devices you know Strava Apple Fitbit whatever it is and so they aggregate all that data for us once you're registered and you've attached your your technology and so that's how we're going to keep track of our mileage and hopefully by September 30th, we will have run 25,000 miles and then we'll pass the virtual baton to the kids for the school season and get them started on their journey. That's awesome. I really like it. That's fun. So just in general, what's the best way for people to find out about Marathon Kids all around? If, if maybe people are listening, they have a child they want to get involved, what's the best way to, to kind of learn more? Yeah, I would just direct them to our website. It's marathonkids.org. You can get a ton of information there. We have free resources for parents that are available that they can download and get going right now. Um, as far as the school program is concerned, if they are in AISD, we're built into the AISD curriculum through their workout for wellness period. So parents should see us even in the remote environment when their PE teachers are visiting with their kids and telling them about their physical activity. Um, and then other than that, if you're, you know, with a school um, or if you wanted to start a club with your school or your community group, then I would, again, just direct you to the website. There's a place there on how to get involved and just click there and it'll, it'll walk you through how to, how to do it. And I'm sure, you know, in our socially distanced world right now, volunteer opportunities might look a little different this year than ordinarily, but is there still a way that people can contribute and participate? Well, there's a couple of ways. So we've, we've started a new thing called Team Marathon Kids, which is basically an endurance team. And I know races right now are primarily virtual, but we still want people going out and challenging themselves in these huge distance races and whatever they're you know trying to accomplish. So whatever races you're participating in, obviously you can be a fundraiser for Marathon Kids and join Team Marathon Kids kids. We've got some perks and things that people can get through their mileage and, and their donation and their fundraising. As for physical opportunities right now, there's not really any. Sure. Um, but we are hoping that this 25th anniversary is going to culminate with a huge celebration and race, um, kind of the final mile uh, in May of 2021. So we'll be looking for volunteers 
in May, I hope. And then, like I said, we're really looking at ways through these other groups Awesome Runners Club, the Council of PTAs, the Trail Foundation, to see if we can't find ways to engage kids again in this time where it'll have to be very small numbers and it'll take, um, you know, an army of volunteers to try to reach these these kids. But we're not quite there yet. Um, and I would just say, you know, we'll publish opportunities. There's a volunteer um, form on our on our website so you can fill that out if you're interested and we'll just hold you there until we're ready to activate something and f fingers crossed right that by may we can do something normal and in, in person yes fingers crossed I feel, I feel like i keep saying that though you know first it was like oh by this fall i'm sure and but hopefully right yeah it's yeah it's been really tough um but i think the virtual events have been really fun um, you know, we'll see how it goes with the relay. We've also, again, I know I keep mentioning Awesome Runners Club, but they are hosting the Daisy 5K, and they're actually offering a 10K distance with it this year, too. It's October 8th through 12th, and all of those proceeds benefit Marathon Kids as well. So, um, and they're doing some fun things, too. They're going to have a, um, what they're calling the mural mile for families mm -hmm. to go out and find their favorite mural and post a picture. Um, and so again, that could be in Austin or it could be anywhere in the country. I mean, it's, that's the one thing with these virtual events that we've seen really increase is the, the reach that you have is so much broader. That, that mural, the mural mile, that's a great idea. I love that. Yeah. No, it's, you know, my, my wife and I, we did a virtual run um, a few weeks ago and it's not the same, you know, you do miss that in-person aspect, but I will say there was still a feeling that you were a part of something. Um, and there was just a little extra motivation that day, you know, when we went out for a run because we felt like we were racing, so to speak. Right. So, yeah. Was, yeah I mean, not the same, but still fun. Right. And you have to find ways to challenge yourself, right? I mean, um, I think, again, you know, like, like I said earlier, we saw all these families coming out, walking, playing, and then it got hot and it kind of trailed off. So it's, you always have to find that next motivation of, of what's going to keep you going, what's going to get you to set set that next goal, do that next challenge. I mean, it's just like anything in life, right? That we always are kind of reaching that next, that next opportunity or that next goal. And that's what we're teaching in Marathon Kids. So we really try to engage the community and just like you said, have some fun things that they can get involved in and maybe activate their physical fitness as well. Well, I think what y'all are doing is, is so important. And so thank you for that. And thank you for making time for us. Yeah. Oh, it's been a pleasure. I've really enjoyed it. You guys are doing a great job over there. Thank you so much. And if you missed any of our episodes of Austin Fit Talks, you can check them all out on our website at austinfitmagazine.com.